gone and all the roses falling it's you it's you must go But come ye back when summer's in the meadow, or when the valley's hushed and white with snow, and I'll be Danny boy, oh Danny boy, I love you so, but when he comes and all the flowers dying, and I am dead, as dead I well may be, you'll come and find the place where I am lying and kneel and say an Ave there for me and I shall hear though soft you tread above me and all my grace For you will burn and tell me that you love me, and I shall sleep in peace until you come to me. Oh, Danny boy, oh. be with you. Let us pray. God, the cries of creation are your own cries. Through the voice of the prophets, you cried for justice to roll like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. We pray that our words this evening, our songs, our candles lit against the night, our walking might be a chorus joined with you for a better world. We pray that this be a step along the way so that our streets may be places to live in, where children are free to play and to live and to grow old, so that we might be repairers of the breach, so that your healing mercies might bind up communities torn by violence so that those in authority might hear the communities they are called to serve and that they might act with the wisdom that you freely give. Bless us with your presence this night. Give strength to Paula's family and to her friends. And may our prayers and cries be heard. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank you so much for the blessing. Um, now I'd like to introduce John Murphy, um, an amazing man, lifetime per river. He lived through this entire situation and uh, maybe some of you have seen him on the news in the past couple of days speaking on the issue. So John Murphy, a legislator, thank you.
I speak tonight for seven parents who volunteered over a decade ago to create a not-for-profit corporation <laughs> named Petition for Paula with a sacred mission. They are Bill Shul, Bob Baird, Betsy Satry, Tom Diveny, Dennis <laughs> Troy, myself, and Lois, of course, a lady of dignity, race, and steel strength of endurance forged in a furnace of anguish. Besides being an inspiration to everyone, she is a teacher by example. Our sacred mission was to make Lois's three wishes come true. Her first wish was to see that Paula's killers never got out of prison. We succeeded for many years until just three members of the parole board turned a blind eye, a deaf ear, and a hard heart to Lois's very moving victim impact statements and more than 30,000 signatures, letters, proclamations, and telephone calls pleading for the parole board's, parole board's understanding of the satanic inhumanity of the killers. We are proud we stood the watch but now our hearts have been broken for the additional pain Lois must <coughs> suffer. This call, this parole, called us to ask every caring person from petitioning the parole board to changing and petitioning the governor who is not empowered to overturn the parole board but legally able to ask them to review their three-person decision with the full board participation. We pray their voices will be heard. Lois's second wish was to make sure that, they, that if they got paroled, that they would never kill again. If this wish does not come true, it is on the conscience of the parole board who freed them. They will be accessories to the crime. Her third wish is what I'm all about, was that Paula never be forgotten. Making sure that Paula is not forgotten is petition for Paula's passion. In my half century of public service, I know of no other person who so captured the hearts of an entire community as Paula has. Her essence, her illuminous, her image, are in the very air we breathe and embedded in our memories, not only as a beloved, cruelly murdered child, but also as our muse, our muse of beauty and art. Even as a young lady, she radiated a warm and bright light a brilliant glowing flame that touched our very souls and which helps us appreciate the meaning of our very existence and the preciousness of life with its frailty and its tragedy and with its beauty as personified by Paula. However, Paula's, uh, Lois and my generations will too soon leave the world stage and Lois's wish will be in the hands of the generation that follow us it will become their sacred mission. They must keep the torch of Paula's power of stirring others lit and hold it high for all to see Lois's wish come true. Paula's life and loss be not in vain. It must have purpose. As a father, I'd like to conclude on the eve of Father's Day. I quote from Paula's dad's letter written in 1981. Paula's physical beauty was ethereal and reminiscent of ancient art. She carried herself with grace and serenity. She was proud of her womanhood and walked straight and tall. Paula should have lived to be a mother. She should have lived to be a grandmother. We have lost her and her splendid progeny. So my message and my prayer is to you people out there of the next generation that you become Paula's children and grandchildren.
and you see she's never forgotten. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce our county executive, Ed Day. Thank you, Pat. Good evening. I want to thank you all for being here as we show support for our fallen angel, Paula Boavesky. The justice provided by the court for Paula, her family, her friends, and the Pearl River community has been stolen. The parole board has upended the intentions of the justice system by releasing Richard LaBarbera, a beast of a man responsible for taking away all of Paula's tomorrows in the most brutal and heinous way. A man who stole Paula's right to a life full of hopes and dreams that were never realized. A man who took away her family, their right to see her grow, to have children, to become a grandmother. For reasons not made known, a broken parole system has charged, has charged, that was charged to be a purveyor of justice has instead become a perversion of justice. Worse yet is that many believe the same parole board is poised to repeat the utter abomination by giving freedom to Robert McCain, the other Cretan who was part of Paula's vicious murder. So yes, there are many emotions here tonight. Shock, anger, hurt, hate, pain, disbelief, betrayal, and so much more. But tonight, tonight, we need to suspend those understandable reactions. We gather here with our hearts and minds laser focused on a common thought, restoring justice for Paula. To paraphrase Irish statesman Edmund Burke, the only thing necessary for, for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing. Tonight we stand together and say enough. The good people of Rockland and the good people of Pearl River will never do nothing. Tonight we place responsibility for righting this grievous wrong squarely in the shoulders of the man responsible for appointing the members of the parole board, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Tonight, we say in one voice, Governor Cuomo, you must take the necessary steps to have the parole board reverse its decision immediately. Governor Cuomo, you are... <laughs> Governor Cuomo, you are known as a man who gets things done. You are the only person in a position to right this wrong. So it falls to you. We say to you in one voice, Paula is our daughter. We look to you, the father of three daughters, to let Paula's final moments on this earth weigh as heavily on your mind as it does on all of ours, particularly the family of Paula. Then take the action you know in your heart must be done. Justice must be restored. To do any less, less is both a disgrace and an absolute outrage. <laughs> Finally, as Paula looks down at us tonight, smiling from the heaven, and she is doing that right now, thanking all of you for never forgetting. We remind her that she will always live in our hearts she will always be our sweet 16 prodigy. She will forever be a part of this community. She is our daughter, and we are all, all for Paula. Thank you very much for being here this evening. I want to thank everyone from the All for Paula team and Petition for Paula. So many people have step forward over the years and in particular this last week to make tonight happen. I want to just tell you a quick story. I've been spending a lot of time on the phone with the woman who was Paula's very close friend right before 
it happened and she was going to be moving and they were saying goodbye it was a couple of weeks i believe beforehand and she started to pull out of the driveway with her mom and she they had said their goodbyes and she said that for some reason Paula was compelled to chase after the car a little bit and they lowered the window and they grabbed each other's hands and Paula said to her, please don't ever forget me. And I think that by judging all of the faces that we see her tonight and the hundreds of not thousands of people who've been sharing this on social media, I think that we have guaranteed that she has not been forgotten and that she will never be forgotten. What we would like to ask everyone to do tonight is to gather across the street at the library where Paula was walking home from work that night. And as you exit the park, everyone will be handed a candle, either a, a lit one or an electric one, a battery operated one. And we would ask that everyone line up in single file, if possible, children and families in the front and respectfully be uh, silent and what we would like to do in single file is start from the library, walk down two blocks to Main Street, some of the steps that Paula took on that night, and then make a right at Main Street and end up in the center of town at the park where the police booth is and the cannon. And there'll be uh, some song and we'll all stand there with the candles lit. And then we'll ask that everyone try and simultaneously extinguish their candles and then walk away in silence. Thank you all so much again. We cannot tell you how much it means to have all of you here with us tonight. Okay, yes. And also, uh, Paula's a father's letter um, that you heard a little bit of earlier will be read in its entirety. In, at the park uh, before we extinguish the candles. So please join us um, in single file to head down to the, the park, please.
say something, I'm giving up on you. I'll be the one if you want me to. Anywhere I would have followed you. Say something, I'm giving up on you. And I am feeling so small. I was over my head. I know nothing at all. And I stumble and fall, still learning to love, just starting to crawl. Say something, I'm giving up on you. I'm sorry that I couldn't get to you. Anywhere I would have followed you Say something, I'm giving up on you And I swallow my pride You're the one that I love And I'm saying goodbye Say something, I'm giving up on you. Sorry that I couldn't get to you. Oh, oh, oh. And anywhere I would have followed you. Say something, I'm giving up on you. Say something, I'm giving up on you. I'm Bob Baird, and I was managing editor of the Journal News on the day that Paul was murdered, and so for the last 40 years, uh, Paul has been part of my life, especially the last 20 when Lois and I reconnected and she's allowed me to share some of the most difficult moments of her life. Being with her when she's getting the decision from a parole board, uh, going along to give moral support when she makes her victim's impact statements at the, at the parole board in Manhattan and just uh, seeing up close the pain of loss, of the pain inflicted by the parole system, and now by barbaric decisions. It's my honor to speak for a man who can't be here, Paula's father, Basil Boavesky. This is a letter that he wrote to Judge Harry Edelstein who was the judge who tried La Barbara and McCain, and Mr. Boavesky wanted to share his feelings and his thoughts about the value of his daughter's life. At the trial, all the permissible evidence was presented and the jury made its decision accordingly. Paul was described simply as a female age 16 occupation student. She was referred to by proper name, but often as the victim or the deceased, so impersonal as to imply that she should have been labeled someone's evidence number so-and-so. It is time for Paula to be represented and evidence presented in her behalf. To measure the enormity of this crime, we must realize the loss, and it is enormous. Paula's blood type may have been six out of 1,000. 
but her type of person was infinitely more rare. Many generations will have to pass to bring us another like Paula. As to her character, she represented decency. She wanted to make this troubled world a better place. She had a multitude of talents and a choice of several careers. Paula had a fierce ambition and was a fighter against injustice. She was just realizing her strength and talent, but was not overwhelmed by it. She was modest and generous and a friend to the friendless. Everybody was happy for her and she responded with love. Paula loved life and she lived it fully, packing in every bit she could. She was just starting to realize the joy of fulfillment in her work. Paula's physical beauty was ethereal and reminiscent of ancient art. She carried herself with grace and serenity. She was proud of her womanhood and walked straight and tall. Paula should have lived to be a mother. She should have lived to be a grandmother. We have lost her and her splendid progeny. Sincerely, Basil Bohovesky. Thank you everybody for coming. If we could extinguish our candles and leave the park, thank you.